We all want to do our part to live green. You know, doing things and making choices that are better for the environment. But sometimes, it's hard to figure out what choices we have to help protect our future. It's important for us to stop and think about how our lifestyles affect the environment. Let's face it, it's difficult to change the way we live or to give up what we're used to. Take transportation. We depend on cars, trucks, buses, trains to get around every day. But what if there was a greener way? What if there was a fuel that was better for the environment than gasoline? A fuel that could help reduce greenhouse gas emissions. This may look like a regular vehicle, but it's not. It's a Chevy Tahoe flex fuel vehicle that runs on E85 ethanol. That's 85% ethanol mixed with 15% gasoline. Vehicles that run on E85 ethanol are called flex fuel vehicles, or FFVs, because they're flexible when it comes to fuel. They can run on E85 ethanol, gasoline, or any combination of the two. Ethanol has been around for a long time. It's an alcohol-based fuel that can be made from a lot of different renewable products, like corn, corn stalks, barley, wheat, rice straw, sugar cane, pulpwood, switchgrass, sugar beets, and even municipal solid waste, or garbage. You mean this stuff takes out the garbage? All right, there's one less chore I have to worry about. <laughs> Well, not exactly, but it does mean that there's an alternative to the mostly non-renewable resources we use today. Right now, over 90% of our energy comes from fossil fuels like petroleum, natural gas, and coal. But fossil fuels are non-renewable resources, so their supply is limited. They can't be replaced in a short period of time. That doesn't sound too good. It isn't. It'd be better if we could get our energy from multiple sources and not depend so much on one kind. That's why E85 ethanol is so great. It can help us diversify our energy supply by giving us another option for fuel. Plus, since 85% of it comes from a product that grows back every year, it's mostly renewable. Renewable resources can be replenished in a short period of time. E85 ethanol can also help reduce our dependence on petroleum, which supplies a majority of our energy today. That means that one of our solutions to our dependence on petroleum is growing right in front of us. In the United States right now, ethanol is made mostly from corn grown right here. So, using ethanol as a fuel can help support U.S. farmers, the agricultural industry, and it can help make us more energy independent. Now, wait a minute. If we start using all this corn to make fuel, what's going to happen to my corn on the cob? I've got to have my corn on the cob. Don't worry, you'll still have your corn on the cob. That kind of corn in the corn you buy in a can or frozen is called sweet corn. But to make ethanol, we use field corn, which is also called dense corn. It's actually the most abundant type of corn grown in the U.S. When you drive past a cornfield, chances are that's field corn growing out there. <sighs> that's a relief. So what's this dent corn mainly used for? It's used for livestock feed or to make starches and oils, paint, crayons, paper, a lot of things. It's also used to make corn syrup sweeteners and in other ingredients and in foods we eat. But the real question is, how do we make corn into something powerful enough to help run a vehicle? That's why we came here to South Dakota. This is one of Verisun Energy Corporation's ethanol production plants. Every year, 43 million bushels of corn are processed here. And every year, it produces 120 million gallons of ethanol. Now that's a lot of corn. The corn plant gets its energy from a process you've learned about in school, photosynthesis. Energy from the sun is absorbed and stored in a corn plant cell. The plant also absorbs water, or H2O, which is two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. The stored energy from the sun separates the oxygen from the water, and the oxygen is released by the plant. The plant also takes in carbon dioxide, or CO2, one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. This carbon dioxide combines with the hydrogen from the water and forms glucose. The glucose, which is made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, is a type of sugar. It's the plant's food. Once the corn plants grow and mature, they're harvested using a machine called a combine. It's called a combine because it combines two harvesting activities, reaping, or cutting the crop, and threshing, or separating out the grain. The combine takes the husks off each ear of corn and then removes the kernel from the ear. The kernels either move through a pipe called an unloading auger to be collected in a separate truck or wagon, or they're held in a holding tank called a hopper. The husks and cobs are usually chopped and spread back onto the field to fertilize the next year's crop. 
A corn kernel has four parts. The endosperm, which contains the starch or energy, the pericarp, or outer covering that protects it, the germ, which contains vitamins and minerals and is made up of about 25% corn oil, and the tip cap, where the kernel is attached to the cob. Water and nutrients flow through there. It's the starch from the corn kernel that's refined into liquid ethanol that can be used for fuel. Wait a minute, what about popcorn? I've got to have my popcorn when I go to the movies. Forget about your popcorn. It'll be there. That's a different type of corn, too, used just for popping. Ethanol from dent corn can be produced using a wet milling or dry milling process. Today, ethanol is mainly produced using a dry milling process like it is here. Come on, let's go inside and see how it works. begins. Corn is delivered by truck or rail from farmers. Hi, how are you? Hi, good, good. Hi. Meet you also. How has the ethanol industry affected your business and agriculture in general? Ethanol has created a new market for our corn that we raise. Um, it's increased our price, more demand for our product, and doing so, we are starting to raise more acres of corn here. When you used to sell corn in the past, what was used for? Our corn would go to local elevators, and uh, a lot of it would go overseas, and so it would get railed out to the ports and sold overseas to foreign customers. As a result of the growing ethanol industry, are you making more of a profit now? Yes, uh, the local ethanol demand has increased our price, and also we are raising more corn due to that increased demand, and that has increased our profits also. Glad you guys are interested in the ethanol process. Absolutely. So, first the entire corn kernel is milled or ground into a flour called meal. Then the meal is mixed with water to form mash. Enzymes are added to the mash to help turn the starch into a simple sugar. And enzymes are like a catalyst to help speed up the chemical process. Yeah, very similar to the way your body breaks down food that you eat. Then the mash is put into a high pressure cooker to help reduce bacteria. Yes. Next, the mash is cooled and put into fermenters where yeast is added. Yeast is a single-celled fungus. Let's go inside and take a closer look. So the yeast eats the sugar and in the process changes the sugar into alcohol and carbon dioxide. This process called fermentation takes about 40 to 50 hours. Correct. And the carbon dioxide that's produced is cleaned and emitted out to the atmosphere where it's reused by the crops in the field. The fermented mash is transferred to distillation columns. The ethanol is then separated from any residue called stillage. The ethanol is then put into a dehydration process where any water is removed. This leaves it as pure as alcohol, and so a small amount of ingredient is added to make the ethanol undrinkable? Yes. Then, the leftover stillage is sent through another process where it becomes livestock feed called distiller grains. Since only the starch from the corn kernels used to make ethanol, the leftover vitamins, minerals, protein, and fat go into this distiller grain, making it very nutritious feed. Out of every bushel of corn, you get about 2.8 gallons of ethanol and 18 pounds of distiller grain? Yes! Would you like to go take a look? That would be great. So this is a bushel of corn. And this is the dry distiller's grain that comes from that corn. Now, over the years, ethanol production has become more and more energy efficient. We make things energy efficient by reducing the amount of energy that is used. Today, ethanol production generates 38% more energy than it takes to produce it. Thank you so much for showing us your lab. You're welcome. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your visit. Bye now.
Remember when I wondered if there was a fuel that was better for the environment? I'm all ears. Get it? Corn ears? <laughs> Do you have to be so, well, corny? I can't help it. It's fun. Ethanol is 35% oxygen, so it actually burns cleaner than gasoline. E85 ethanol helps reduce greenhouse gas emissions, specifically carbon dioxide emissions and smog forming emissions. In 2005, ethanol use in the U.S. reduced CO2 equivalent greenhouse gas emissions by almost 8 million tons. That's equal to removing the annual emissions of more than 1 million cars from the road. Now that sounds more like living green. A couple of other bonuses? Ethanol is non-toxic, biodegradable, and doesn't contaminate water. So, can everyone use E85 ethanol for fuel? Can every vehicle in America run on yellow? Not yet. But flex fuel vehicles like these GM vehicles that can fill up on E85 ethanol are available right now, and no added costs are passed along to the consumers. On the road today, there are about 5 million flex fuel vehicles that can run on E85 ethanol. By the end of 2006, there will be over 6 million. If all of these vehicles ran on E85 ethanol, that would displace the need for 3.6 billion gallons of gasoline every year. Now that's some fuel for thought. You can tell if a new GM vehicle can run on E85 ethanol because of this flex fuel badge and this yellow fuel cap. E85 ethanol typically provides more horsepower than gasoline. One downside to E85 ethanol is you can go further on a gallon of gasoline than you can with a gallon of E85 ethanol. The important thing to remember is each gallon of E85 ethanol is only 15% gasoline, so you're using way less fossil fuel and replacing it with a renewable resource. Also, in areas with a large supply of E85 ethanol, it's usually cheaper than gasoline. So, what's holding us back? If E85 ethanol is as good as it sounds, then why isn't everyone running on yellow? First, people need to know about this fuel and ask for it as a choice at the pump. And we need more production plants making ethanol and more service stations selling it. Luckily for us, people are catching on. The amount of ethanol produced in the United States increased 145% from the years 2000 to 2005. There was an increase of 42% just from 2003 to 2005 alone. And by the end of 2006, we'll be able to produce almost 5 billion gallons of ethanol a year. And work is in progress to increase that amount by over 2 billion gallons. Most ethanol is produced in the corn growing states of the Midwest. But other states are beginning to build ethanol plants too. Right now, there are over 90 ethanol plants currently running, and at least 35 more are set to begin by the end of 2006. In 2005 alone, 43 ethanol production plants, that's almost half the total, began building or were expanded. What about creamed corn? Because sometimes... <laughs> You'll be fine. Besides, most of the corn grown in the U.S. isn't grown for us to eat. More than half of it is used for livestock feed. And remember, there are other crops we can use to produce ethanol. With corn, starch is broken down into sugar that is then fermented. That means other sugar crops like sugar cane and sugar beets can also be used. And the process of making ethanol from fast-growing trees, grasses, and crop waste is also being developed. In this process, the cellulose, which is a group of glucose molecules, can be converted into sugar. So what about fueling up with E85 ethanol? Right now across the country, there are over 800 E85 ethanol fueling stations. The real goal here is to find a true fuel diversity, giving us a choice every time we fuel up at the pump. There are other fuels out there, but it's been mostly gasoline that's produced and distributed. So it's not a surprise that gasoline is what we've been mostly using. But what if there was a choice? What if we could live green by going yellow? You may be asking yourself, can this really work? Can we really diversify our energy supply and reduce greenhouse gas emissions? The answer is yes. Take Brazil, for example. It's one of the world's largest producers and consumers of ethanol made from sugarcane. In 1975, Brazil began implementing a plan to use ethanol for fueling vehicles. And today, over half the vehicles in that country are flex fuel vehicles, and almost all of its fueling stations offer ethanol as an option. 
Its ethanol program is one of the reasons Brazil was able to cut its oil imports by almost 70% in 13 years. Well, what are we doing to boost E85 ethanol use here in the United States? For starters, it's going to take a lot of planning and partnering and cooperation from the federal and state governments. But we have to begin somewhere. And as you can see, a lot of work has been done very quickly to make E85 ethanol fuel available to all Americans. Now we have to keep going and expand our efforts. Some state governments have already passed laws to encourage the use of renewable fuels, and many are considering doing the same. And automakers are working every day to make more flex fuel vehicles available for consumers to choose from. GM already has over 2 million flex fuel vehicles on the road. And GM is working with state governments, fuel providers, and fuel retailers to help you choose E85 ethanol sooner. Working together, we can make it happen. We can make sure that E85 ethanol is a choice for everyone. It's our future. We can help turn it yellow. I almost forgot. Cornbread. <laughs> You're still good. If you want one of our t-shirts, you can just log on to livegreengoyellow.com.